Yeah. Every ammonium I've seen in tempers. Yes. <clears throat> Everybody can use it. Yeah. They're all broken. Um, yeah. Yeah. <clears throat> Thank you.
Krishna. Om Namo Bhagavate Vasudevaya Om Namo Bhagavate Vasudevaya Om Namo Bhagavate Vasudevaya Hare Krishna, we're studying Bhagavad Gita as it is, chapter 8, entitled Attaining the Supreme. We're on text 6. It's September 12th, 2021. We're in Melrose, Florida at the Prabhupada House, a Bhakti Yoga Enlightenment program. Hare Krishna. Uh, uh, yum, yum. Yum, yum. Bobby. Smaran. Bhavam, Chajatyante, Kalevaram, Tum Tum, Evati, Kontea, Sada, Tad, Baba, Babita. Yum yum bapi smaran babam. Yum yum bapi smaran babam. Kajatyante kalevaram. Kajatyante kalevaram. Tom tom ebe Sadatad baba babita. Yum yum bapi smaran babam. Chajatyante Kalevaram Tum Tum Eveti Kontea Sadatad Baba Babita Yum Yum Babi Smaran Babam Chajatyante Kalevaram Come to me, Vati Kontea. Sadatad Baba Babita. And Yam yam Bhapi 
Tam tam evaiti kontea. Would anyone online like to recite the verse? Anyone else? Yam yam vapi smaran baba. Yam yam vapi smaran baba. Yajat yante kalevaram. Tam tam evai ti kontea. Sadatad baba babita. Yam yam. Yam yam. Whatever. Whatever. Ba. Either. Either. Api. Also. Also. Smaran. Smaran. Remembering. Remembering. Babam. Uh, nature, nature. Jajati. Jajati. Give up. Give up. Ante. Ante. At the end. At the end. Kalevaram. Kalevaram. This body. This body. Tum, tum. Tum, tum. Similar. Similar. Eva. Eva. Certainly. Certainly. Eti. Eti. Get. Get. Kontea. Kontea. Oh, son of Kunti. Oh, son of Kunti. Sada. Sada. Always. Always. Ta. Ta. That. That. Baba. Baba. State of being. State of being. Babita. Babita. Remembering. Remembering. Translation. Whatever state of being one remembers when he quits his body, that state he will attain without fail. Purport by his divine grace, A.C. Bhaktivedanta Swami Prabhupada. The process of changing one's nature at the critical moment of death is here explained. <laughs> How can one die in the proper state of mind? Maharaj Bharat thought of a deer at the time of death and so was transferred to that form of life. However, as a deer, Maharaj Bharat could remember his past activities. Of course, the cumulative effect of the thoughts and actions of one's life influences one's thoughts at the moment of death. Therefore, the actions of this life determine one's future state of being. If one is transcendentally absorbed in Krishna service, then his next body will be transcendental, spiritual, not physical. Therefore, the chanting of Hare Krishna is the best practice for successfully changing one's state of being to transcendental life. Om Agyana Timirana Dasya Gyananjana Shalakaya Chakshur and Militam Yena Tasmai Shri Gurve Namaha Shri Chaitanya Mano Bishtam Stabi Damina Bhutale Svayam Rupa Kadamayam Dadati Svapadanti Kam Vandeham Shri Guru Shri Tapadakamalam Shri Guru and Vaishnavam Stam Shri Rupam Sagrajatam Saganaragnatan Tam Tam Sajivam Sadvetam Savadutam Parijana Saitan Krishna Chaitanya Deva Shri Radha Krishna Padan Sagana Lalita Shri Vishakan Vitam He Krishna Karuna Sindhu Dina Bandhu Jagat Pate Gopisha Gopika Kanta Radha Kanta Namos Tute Tapta Kancha Nagorange Radha Vrindavaneshvare Vrishabhanu Sute Devi Pranamami Hari Priye Pancha Kalpati Yuvyascha Kripa Sindhu Vyevacha Patitanan Pavane Vyo Vaishnava Vyo Namona Maha Jai Sri Krishna Chaitanya Prabhu Nichananda Sri Advaita Gadadara Shiva Sarikura Bhakta Vrinda Hare Krishna Hare Krishna 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 Hare 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 Rama Hare Rama 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 Hare Hare Namo Om Vishnu Padaya Krishna Prasthaya Bhutale Srimate Bhakti Vedanta Swami Niti Namine Namaste Saraswati Deve Gauravani Pracharine Nirvishesha Shunyavadi Paschacha Desha Tarine Bhagavad Gita as it is, Chapter 8, Text 6 Yam Yam Bhapi Sman Bhavam Jati Jante Kalebram Tam Tam Neveti Kanteya Saratat Bhava Bhavita Whatever state of being one remembers when he quits his body, that state he will attain without fail. How are you, Krishna? Okay.
So back more than 30 years ago, I, I, I lived in the villages of a community uh, known as the Druze, the, the Druze community, uh, D-R-U-Z-E. And actually, uh, Druze is a misnomer. I'm, I'm speaking about that because for me, it relates to this verse very much. <laughs> Uh, this is why well, telling stories about the Druze. What's no, it relates to this verse for me. Um, so actually, the uh, Druze don't think of themselves as just like like the term Hindu is a misnomer. Like if, if we look in all the Vedas, it never talks about Hindu like that. Similarly, Jesus never said become a Christian, right? <laughs> so, um, so. Uh, um, so there's, Prabhupada explains, this is history. So there's a, like a, there's a river called the Sindhu River. And on one side was like followers of the Quran, the Muslims. And on the other side was like maybe, all, this is maybe a thousand years ago. So already hundreds of different sects, who maybe in some ways followed the Vedas, but you know, maybe some followed Shiva or some were the Gyanis, or, you know, hundreds of different sects. So that, the Muslims would lump, lump them together and just point to the other side of the river and call them the Sindhus. But they couldn't pronounce S so well. The, the S got mispronounced as H. So they all became Hindus. So in a sense, in a scholarly sense, there's no meaning there, but it, 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 it stuck. So similarly with the Druze. Actually, the Druze refer to themselves as the Mwahedu, <clears throat> that we can see that the root eka, eka means really Mahedun translates as Sanatana Dharma, that they are followers of the eternal Dharma, the eternal path of self realization and God consciousness. And so there was a heretic, a heretic, someone who kind of went against the Sanatana Dharma, and his, his name was El Drazi. So some Muslim groups in Egypt at that time, in order, you know, yeah, kind of like in a degrading, demeaning way. They uh, they started calling the Mwahedun after the the heretic, so they called them Druze after El Drazi. So the name stuck. But the, the Druze themselves, they like, we're not Druze, we're 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 Mwahedun. and you know, their their sheiks know that actually, actually, they are a. Um, Actually, they're a, a, a Vedic group that got transplanted to the Middle East once on our Sankirtan adventures in the Druze villages like Korfish, Julius, um, uh, uh, Rama, Druze village called Rama, Beit John, <clears throat> Bajan. So, uh, so once some, some Matajis were approaching an old, and that the Druze are seen as an unor or unorthodox sect of Muslims. But most of them know they're not, although they may be forgetting their own tradition as generations go on. So the Matajis were in a village and they were just like an old sheik, you know, maybe well into his 80s, the Jews attire religious person. And so they had some, we had Arabic Gita and we had several books in Hebrew. Very few read English. So we wouldn't go around with too many English books. So they, and so they started showing him the books and he was listening for some time. So they were speaking, it was a little, you know, he was, he was silent. So at one point he, uh, so then he turned to the two Matajis who were there. And he said, you don't love Krishna like I love Krishna. <laughs> Again, like, so, <laughs> he just, you don't love Krishna like I love Krishna. And again, just and these were early days in the villages that so were there introducing them to Bhagavad Gita. Then he went on to describe his previous life as a yogi in the Himalayas, and he didn't quite reach completion, but this is stuff like that. So this was like every day at the end of the Sankirtan day, everyone would have these stories. Mm -hmm. And um, yeah, be like uh, they'd be very hospitable, invite us into their homes, and uh, be like there'd be like the four-year-old, the neighbor would be there, and then the father would go, yes, yes, our son, um, our son 
50 years ago, he was the grandfather of, 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 our, neighbor, of our neighbor Mahmoud in a village in Syria, you know, all, all these things. So they, they, uh, they know, so they have a deep, uh, I mean, the Jews are secretive. <clears throat> so I wrote a book and I re revealed all their secrets. <laughs> but other than that, so, um, yeah, but uh, so it's kind of known, they know, they, you know, they accept this verse of Bhagavad Gita. Um, so uh, the, the parallels were stunning. The parallels were stunning. That uh, so, Salman Falah, he was the the minister of Jews education in Israel. And we had already, by the time we met him, we had already distributed full sets of Prabhupada's books to all the Jews school libraries all over Israel. It's about 20 villages. And he knew that. But we, we met him and then he started reading the books. And he goes, he goes, he, he said, he said, he, he wrote the foreword for Christian Israel and the Jews, by the way. And he said, I know that the more I read these books, I'm going to, I'm going to discover what the Jews religion is all about. He said, I know that. And for himself personally, he, he got, because he was one of the few English speakers, he got all the full Bhagavatam set, full Chaitanya Charitam, first personal library, Chaitanya Charitam. And he purchased, uh, and he made like ten fifteen thousand dollars to purchase all courtesy of the Israeli government. Mm -hmm. That's what governments are supposed to do, support the Brahmins. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yes, yeah. Let's, let's, let's bring that spirit more and more to gain. So he got sets of books uh, in Hebrew and Arabic uh, for, for all of uh, the, the Jews' libraries that he was in charge of, even though they already had the sets. They were happy to get more. And uh, so, um, yeah, so transmigration of the souls is a central tenet of, of their, not just belief, but understanding. Actually, this was maybe a few months ago. I may have forwarded to some of you, but I, I, I was forward, forwarded to me a, a link. This is from the village of Majdal Shamps, translates as Tower of the Sun. It's at the uh, top of the Golan Heights, a little geography there. So it's, called, it's technically, it's occupied territory. So it's right on the border of Syria, actually, because they have like relatives going back generations. So it's so close that like the, the occupied territory, Majid al Shams, they'll, they'll go to the mountain and their Syrian relatives will go to it. Like they maybe haven't seen each other for 60 years. They, or like or they, be, they've never seen each other, but their children will meet their cousins. And the Syrians in South Syria, will stand on the mountain and they, they'll just yell back and forth. <laughs> so Maj Del Shams, Tower of the Sun. And um, we did a lot of book distribution there. Um, um, mystical place, transcendental place. So someone sent me a video. So there was some, someone, Maj Del Shams, there's the Jews family. And there, there's even less English going on than in Israel proper. This is occupied territory. We won't get to the politics of it. Mm -hmm. But there's, just, there's even, because like the Jews in Israel proper, they all serve in the Israeli army proudly. In fact, I talked to many Palestinians who will say the worst soldiers are the Jews, meaning like they're the nastiest. <laughs> yeah, yeah, worse, worse than the Jews. But in, in the Majd al Shams area, many of them identify as Syrian, so it's a bit different. But um, so, 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 the, so, the, uh, so there's like a three-year-old in the village. Right? And there's no English in this village. And, and the three-year-old, he didn't speak. Right? He starts speaking around eight months, one year. He was like stunted in his speech. So the parents, and it's a big extended family. You got the grandmother, you got everyone. They're worried. Right? He's stunted in his speech. So somewhere like shortly after his third birthday, he just started speaking fluently, but they couldn't understand him because it wasn't Arabic. <laughs> he started speaking fluently as if he were like, like a four or five year old child in England around 1900. 
It's just fluent. Okay, fluent. Like like a, a four-year-old. And and they're like, well, he's, he's speaking, but we still can't communicate with him because they don't speak English and like that. And he and um and even they sent in like highly skeptical, cynical, cynical Israeli Jewish scientists. Like, no, no, bro. But no, they, they, he didn't see this on TV. And it wasn't just like a word of English here or there. And even he would be identifying things that just, not even that he didn't know the Arab word for like, like something like, like a scale from, from 120 years ago in Britain. And he would see pictures. Oh, that is a scale in a British accent. Okay, so stuff like that. There's a lot of accounts of like if you research into it, there's lots of accounts of children who know like just know or can recognize things with like for no you know same thing. Concept, Precise. Just like yeah. Bam. Yeah. So this is so there's lots of scientific research on this, and mm -hmm. just just in this one, there's scientific just in West in this one area, it's just like strong incontrovertible evidence that there's something going on that's not material. Mm -hmm. There's something going on that's not material. And right, uh, like, oh, and if, if, if we read, if we study the research uh, for many decades now, the research on reincarnation, reincarnation is like the popular term, mm -hmm. and transmigration of souls are more technical. If we study the research, um, a lot of the research is on the Druze. A, lo a lot of the research is on the, um, uh, this population that, I'm, yeah. that I lived with yeah. because they have a tendency to, it doesn't mean that everything they remember is true, yeah. but like in this, in this one short video, but then the, the Jewish uh, scientist, she was very skeptical. And now there's obviously some reason, maybe he has an uncle who, I don't know, but there's just nothing, nothing other than, you know, that from, from some previous life, he's got, he's got this in him. And she, she could tell she was transformed. She was stunned, not just, oh, I, oh this is not but like her whole view of life, because it indicates clearly uh, there's something non-material going on. And so those were like, oh, the, the church of scientism, where everything- Tangible evidence that faith exists and like people, I don't know, that's what I got from that. Yeah, the, the view that everything can be explained by empirical science. Just this one case, it torpedoes that whole stance. And there's hundreds and hundreds. And this is just one area. You can look at the like experiments in random number generation. Uh, and they, they've done the, these experiments at Princeton University. Okay. And so they'll just have like a computer generate random numbers like ones and zeros. And then look people, People who are not like known as are you clairvoyant or you this are you uh, sci-fi or something, just like normal people, and they'll just go okay, okay. It's so just kind of like concentrating on lots of ones coming through, like one or ones coming through, and and with statistical significance when someone focuses in. This is at Princeton University. Now you don't hear a lot about this because because um, it goes against the materialistic paradigm. Materialistic mean mean like the only thing that exists is matter. Um, but then no, the, the results of the random number generation goes more towards the one when they're focusing on one. Just ordinary people, you know, in New Jersey or Pennsylvania or like that. So so lots of so it's lots of scientific means like like uh reincarnation. <laughs> yeah, 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 you can get you can get some newspaper at like when you check out the supermarket. <laughs> the right. Inquirer. Yeah, the, the National Enquirer, some yellow rag or something. But then that's 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 part of the strategy, really. That like when because when you see something like that or UFOs, yeah, aliens, then it's like, oh yeah, it's all nonsense. But because mm -hmm. no one, hardly anyone, takes those papers seriously. Um, uh, but there's serious scientific evidence that's incontrovertible in so many areas. We've just mentioned a few of them. So. Yeah, so that all, um, so um, so we can, you know, we can study the scientific research and that will build trust. Or we can just hear from Bhagavad Gita. Oh, it's already there, Bhagavad Gita. Okay, mm -hmm. so that that's that's that, that's that's what we're reading. Through. So this is very rational from, from from any any point of view. 
And and these are, you know, in Bhagavad Gita. So that's what this verse is. Yam yam bhapi saman bhava. This term bhava is mentioned three times. It essentially means our consciousness. So this is, so it takes it out of the woo woo. It's, it's quite grounded and responsible. It's, this isn't something airy fairy. According to our consciousness that we develop, uh, then we create a body. Things go from subtle to external. This is the, you know, the secret became very popular. So this is the science of how things go from subtle to external. So according to the consciousness we develop in this body, then we're, we're forming our next body now. And just like, let's say if we, we develop particular consciousness and habits as a teenager. So that affects what we're dealing with in our 20s. Hmm. Maybe we develop particular consciousness and habits in our 20s. That affects what we're dealing with in our 30s and 40s. Just, so, so that process doesn't stop. That, okay, so, so wherever we're absorbed at the time of the, this body getting completely destroyed, that affects the context that we're dealing with. And to go back to the, right. So maybe because we all have experience, right? like, yeah, like maybe we're trying to, we have some more wisdom now compared to a previous time in life. So we want to change our thought patterns. We want to change our emotional reactive patterns. We want to change our external habits relating to all life areas, eating, sleeping, sex, everything. But it's not easy because I developed a particular consciousness that makes it difficult to change those addictive habits that I developed when I was six years old and started watching TV. Adolescence, when I was exposed to all sorts of things I shouldn't have been exposed to, et cetera, et cetera. Or bad work habits. And oh, now I'm trying to, now I'm trying to get this college degree, but I had bad work habits in junior high school. Okay, so our consciousness, that's what we do, we're dealing with. Mm. So, is again, it, it, it takes these con concepts in a very rational, universal, ground to Universal, one thing I'll say, if anyone's interested to like get to know some Gita verses, this is a good one to memorize. You know, it's it's one. Yum, yum. What's that? It's yum, yum. Yeah, 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 it's sure. It's, it, it is yum, yum, yum. Yum, yum. Rapi, sman, babam, cha, jitante, kale, varam. Tum tum may they take. Tears, 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 and some verses are especially relevant to us. This is one of them. Another one. As the embodied soul continually passes in this body from childhood to youth to old age, the soul similarly passes into another body at the time of death. So these verses go together. The one I just quoted is from the second chapter. This is from the eighth chapter. So, so this is universal. Someone can say, but I don't believe in Krishna. I'm, I'm an agnostic. I'm a Christian. I'm black. I'm white. I'm woman. I'm man. It, it's, this is universal. It doesn't matter. We all, we've all experienced some constant identity that I call David. Call Valerie, you call Vishnu, but the body's changing, right? Where, where is the two-year-old body? Where is the five-year-old body? Okay, so what's what's the governing principle behind the, the change of body? Right? So, so the time of death, just like it, it's just like X is not a function of Y from here to there, so it's not a function of Y. So the existence of this identity that is David, it's not dependent on whether that irreducible quantum of consciousness that is me 
was in the infant body, the embryonic body, the 10 year old, the 20 year old, 30 year old, now 60 year old. So similarly at the time of change of body, technically speaking, death is another change of body. There's a particular change of body we call death. Okay, so that change of body, the self, the atomic unit of sentience that is the self continues to exist. So what, what determines where it goes, that's this verse that we're studying today. So just like you know, we gave the example, like, yeah, it matters what consciousness and habits we develop at 15 years old. <laughs> yeah, that matters <laughs> for, for what our 20s will look like. Yeah, it matters. So similarly, what, what consciousness we're, we're developing right now, that, that matters a whole lot about what happens at the change of body called death. These are universal principles. And this, and it's, you know, and in our Sophito programs, we emphasize a lot the principle of 100% personal responsibility. So this is it at the core and it's in its completeness. It's no accident that I'm in this particular body and you're in that particular body and your spirit souls in the body of a squirrel got that body. No, according to particular, we wanted to enjoy in a certain way. That's a combination, combination of desire and deserve. And I'm the source of what I desire and what I deserve. That's maybe a crude example, but to get, just to get the idea of this principle, this principle of transmigration of the soul. So maybe I've got envy because I live in a particular house, but there's someone there in that neighborhood who has a much nicer house than me and like that. So maybe I'm coveting. Uh, oh, if I could, oh, but it's not so much working. I, I want to bring him down. I wish I, okay. So maybe at the time of death, maybe at the time of death, I'm absorbed in getting that nicer house, more opulent people will see I'm successful. So that's my desire. But maybe, maybe I lived a trashy life. Maybe I lived a very dirty life with very, very slovenly habits. And like that. So maybe when the spirit soul in this body leaves, maybe I enter, enter into the womb of a female cockroach. In that $10 million house though. So I made it. Yeah, I made it. I feel understood. I feel understood precisely. Explains that so well. The way the way that whole analogy it makes sense. I've been really ruminating on that, like the how it's decided what we move into. Like I'm sorry, I don't mean I, I do need to interrupt. Um, well, I'm, I'm 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 glad that this is landing for you. We want yeah. it to land for all like of you us. You can have what you want, but it might not be in the physical form that you prefer based off of like your you know activities and consciousness and how you're you know, relationship with Krishna or whoever your, your God is and, and, and the pureness of like, or not, I don't even want to say pureness, but just like integrity and honesty of soul and truth and kindness and giving and service. There's, like, there's a science here. It's not, it's not random chance. Yeah. And so Prabhupada, Prabhupada in the purport, he's, well, he gave the example of Maharaj Bharat. Which is a nicer example than my cockroach. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So Maharaj brought. So this is a this is a special soul. So Ma, he was he wasn't just like the prime minister or the king. He was like the emperor of like the whole planet. I guess. Mm -hmm. Okay. So because we can all think of like giving up stuff. So he had a lot to give up. He he he, he had a lot to give up. And he did, he, he renounced it all. Uh, just, no, he, he had his queens and the, the, the children and, and people loved him and power and opulence. And then he was like in his twenties and he gave it up to go to the forest to serve Krishna. I mean, you can't serve Krishna from within the kingdom. So we, let's not get that wrong. But he just, he, he, he renounced everything. So was his family a hindrance to his well, in his case, 
he responsibly took care of his family okay. before he gave it up. Before he gave it up. Yeah. And so one could be in family life or not in family life. If it's conducive to Exactly. Yeah. Precisely. Thank you, Eze. <laughs> Thank you, Eze. Yes. Yeah. So uh now what like okay, right there. There's a painting of Srila Bhakti Vinod Thakur. It's done by it's that's a Pushkar original. Okay. So Bhakti Vinod Thakur, he's a great Achari in our line. Bhakti Vinod Thakur. He had he had 13 children. <laughs> and he was he was a he was a judge, he was a magistrate. In, in in the British legal system. And he was man practically he was managing the whole city, which is based around the Jagannath Temple, Bhaktivinoda Thakur. So he's he's the topmost pure devotee. Okay. And then we have others like Srila Bhakti Siddhanta Goswami, who never had any close relations with a woman. And he's also so the point is it's not depend on anything external. So Maharaj Bara. He, um, he was in the forest just meditating on Krishna and doing his service. Okay. And he got, he got sentimentally, but affectionately, just you guys soft to it. There were some, some deer. And, 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 and so a, a deer was crossing, the deer gave birth and the mama deer died. Mm -hmm. So there's a baby deer and he went to rescue it and he rescued it. So because he, he felt responsible, so he took care of it. So he wasn't doing anything bad or evil. It's good stuff. Very compassionate, soft heart. Okay. But then he did get uh, distracted, you know, from, from just from doing all the rounds and from his devotion. He got a little distracted by the cute pet deer. And then one day, like, he couldn't find the deer. And he was in anxiety. Oh, the deer's going to be eaten by tigers or something. So it was like it was getting dark out and he was going, and then he tripped and like banged his and he, he left his body. Mm -hmm. So that's an example. So, it, it, so it's an example that, so he had a lot of Krishna with him and he also had a, the deer, the deer. So he took his next birth, he took, he took birth as a deer. He took birth as a deer, but this was a special deer because this deer, so described in the fifth canto of Bhagavatam, this deer, um, this deer realized like, okay, I got distracted from my goal of getting out of this material world and not getting him another material body. As, yeah, exactly. So, so this deer would find like devotees who were chanting, devotees eating prasad, he would hang out there. <laughs> he would, this deer would find devotees in the forest who were reading Bhagavad Gita and Srimad Bhagavatam, I'm gonna hang out there. It's true, it's a true story. Okay, so when then that, that deer died, okay, then he took body Jad Bharat and, and then that then after after that lifetime, which is you know, we, the whole we could do a whole course on that, but after that lifetime then back home back to Godhead without being forced to get a material body. So that's what Prabhupada's emphasizing here. Mm. That therefore the actions of this life determine the one's future state of being. If one is transcendentally absorbed in Krishna's service, then his next body will be transcendental spiritual, not physical. So a transcendental body. That's, that's what, like, that's what Bhakti Vinod Thakur and Bhakti Stant and Srila Prabhupada and Krishna and Arjuna, like, go for the transcendental body. Go for that. Be be responsible at the highest level and encourage others go for the transcendental body. And so we're going to say, but it, it's not just like a rah, rah, go for it. There's a process. It's not like, maybe I'll be lucky. Just like, let's just say, let's say, um, let's say the teenager or the young adult um, is doing all decadent activities and, uh, and others are saying, well, you, know, you should really mold your life. Get, 
get like a university degree. It'll serve you well. You're have, have, you have more opportunity. This is an example. Okay. Or you know, you know, really discipline yourself, develop this business and start a retirement fund, whatever. So maybe the, uh, the youth or young adult will go, I'm going to continue with my reckless decadent activities. And maybe when I'm older, I'll get an honorary PhD. That could happen. Could happen. Anything could happen. Exactly. Anything could happen. So then, then others are like, like, uh, okay, not that it couldn't happen. Yeah, there's a fraction of an iota of a fraction of, you know, but like, that's not really the process. The process is like, you, know, you, you study, you love, you pass the test. So, so similarly, if we want to get that transcendental body and get out of the body, subject to birth, death, old age, so many miseries, so many miseries involved, intrinsically involved in material life, then there's a process. And actually, I'll just pre the, the previous verse, Antakale Chamam Ram Smar Mufa Kale Ram Ya Prayati Samad Baham Yati Nas Ya Sam Shaya. And whoever at the time of death quits his body, remembering me alone, at once attains my nature. Of this, there is no doubt. And in the purport, Prabhupada writes, to remember Krishna, one should chant the Maha Mantra, Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare, Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Rama Rama, Rama Hare Hare. Incessantly, following in the footsteps of Lord Chaitanya, being more tolerant than the tree, humbler than the grass and offering all respect to others without requiring respect in return. In such a way, one will be able to depart from the body successfully remembering Krishna and so attain the supreme goal. So that's the main part of the process. Um, if we wanted to like the, to make this our last material body, chant Hare Krishna with determination and joy. But even if we're not feeling the joy because we're so attached to some other things, continue with discipline. Chant Hare Krishna. And to whatever extent, you know, we're ready to stretch ourselves, follow what Krishna calls the regulative principles of freedom, including a regulative principle to chant a minimum amount of japa every day, to participate and organize in enlightenment programs like this, mm -hmm. to follow. Uh, uh, yesterday morning we were talking Patram Pushpam Palam Turiyam Yomi Bhakti Prayachati Tadaham Bhakti Paritam Ashtami Prayatatmana. That's the quintessential prasadam verse in Bhagavad Gita. And to, we, to, to eat as much prasadam as possible. Uh, actually, the idea is to eat that whatever we consume, if we're serious about the transcendental body, to make a vow, I'm going to consume only prasadam. Okay, like that. I mean, that, that's a possibility. Uh, going back to the, with these Druids, we, we would, it, it's, it's a relative. Jews in Israel at the time, 30 years ago, it's maybe about 90,000, 100,000. And we were saturating their villages with sets of Prabhupada's books. And we would go, like we'd go back to like another village. We'd also have phenomenal experiences with Arab Christians and Arab Muslims, but you know, it's a whole thing. But we would go back to the Jews and like, you know, be a village. We hadn't been there for like a year or something. So we'd knock on the door. And they'd let us in and they go, oh, oh yes, about eight months ago or a year, your, your friends were here and they, would, they already had all the books in their shelf. In many cases, the parents couldn't even read the books, mm -hmm. but they got the books for their children and grandchildren because the parents could only read Arabic. We, didn't. We, we had a Bhagavad Gita in Arabic, but not the other book. But so, so sometimes we would knock on the door and they'd come in, oh yes, uh, yes, your friends were here a few months ago. We have all these books. Yeah, we couldn't live without them. And we'd just be talking and then they'd, they'd be saying to us like, yeah, well, like it says in the ninth chapter, Patram Pushpam Palam Toyam, you only but like, so they, they weren't just like, these books were not collecting dust. They were learning the verses. It was sometimes embarrassing how deeply they were into the books. Or uh, it would come and someone would be there I remember once a young fellow, maybe about 30 years old, he said, oh yeah, no, your friends are already here last year. I have the book, but, but we had, well, now we have third canto. Oh, third canto, wow. And these were not rich people, 
but they were like, whatever it is, you know, like that. Because this, this, they knew what it meant to put the one in front of the zeros in their homes. So we were sitting and he would go, okay, so, so something I'm not understanding is like, so Bhishma Dave, he's a devotee of Krishna, yet he's fighting Krishna. Could you explain that more? <laughs> so this, this wasn't like, why do you wear paint on your face or stuff like that? <laughs> not, not that we're against people who ask, why do you wear paint on your face? But so like, these are like real sages on the mountain. So, <clears throat> so, <clears throat> Um, you know, so there's these, so, you know, we're implored, take this seriously, take this seriously, All right? To, to be, be, really use your human form of life responsibly. Don't waste time. Avyata Kalefa, a devotee is described, not wanting to waste a second outside of cultivating the transcendental body, which is non different. Trans the transcendental body is made of devotional service. So, so as, as we get more and more like inspired, even not inspired, just dedicated to do devotional service, then we're forming our transcendental body. Then we're, 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 our, our transcendental body gets uncovered. And the recommendation is, yeah, take this seriously. Whatever state of being one remembers when he quits his body, that state he will attain without fail. And just the word bhavam, it's, some, it's kind of translated as remembers. It's not just a cognitive remembrance, but like what's, what's our inner state? And Prabhupada emphasizes that we could get the honorary degree, but like, cool. well, but even that, because like, yes, yeah, so let me live a decadent life now, then, then I'll. In a transcendental by time, death could happen. But even that's like stupid. <laughs> because because it's like based on the conception that, yeah, just living a decadent life of eat, drink, and be merry, that's the way to be happy now. But like a little insight is no, no, actually the best way to be happy now is to get up early and come to morning program and sing some Saradava Nala Lita Loka. The best way to be happy on a Sunday afternoon. To What's that? She's to come to the enlightenment, come to the enlightenment yeah. program. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, right. So, um, so, so even you know whatever future life, but it's the best way to be happy now, and to prepare when we become twenty years old, and thirty and forty, and when this body is completely useless and we leave it. Thank you. And uh, just here online, we have the Mara family, Susanna, and Ladini Shakti. And um, uh, here in person, there's a Jew and Vishnu and Lakshmi Priya and Anasuya and Mali. And I see Prima Lula there and Val Valerie was here. And, uh, and so any questions or comments? Hi, Krishna. Is there a new question or comment there, Vishnu? Uh, Malini, Sherry, yes. Thank you, well, we need to and help out. I, I, I had the realization of that part of the block of Russia, how that said, our oh, action. Yeah. Our oh, action. Can you read it again? Please sure. Read it okay. Um, okay. Of course, the cumulative effect of the thoughts and actions of one's life influences one's thoughts at the moment of death. Therefore, the actions of this life determines one's future state of being. Yeah. So I was, you know, I, I you know, I go through some experience for the last few months. And <clears throat> I have some like deep realization of how this is true. Okay. Yeah. Because I practice Krishna consciousness stuff for five years, something like yeah. that. Please. You know, whatever level of sincerity, whatever level of seriousness, and uh, you know, keeping my vow of chanting 16 on every day. Yeah. The quality of the round is irrelevant for this conversation. Right. And um, <clears throat> and then when I was hit with so much 
drugs, poison in my system, yeah, yeah. like my system was dying really. I I was very, very surprised to see that the 16 round and more were just going on. Going on. It was just going on. It's, yeah. it's, it wasn't even like a wheel. Mm. It wasn't. It wasn't even uh, my doing. It just continued to go on. Yeah. And 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 um, and so even so, I was incapacitated. Yeah. And in a way, like not consciously, consciously not even able to connect with Krishna. Yeah. Not you know like it was. I was just suffering. I was in pain. And suffering and consciously I have such a feeling of being so far away from Krishna. But even though that was going on on the conscious level, like there was another level that was almost like mm. coming from the 35 years. Yeah. Those those actions, those habits over 35 yeah. years. Yeah. And so the, the what I want to share is um because at the time of death, we have no guarantees of anything. Right. You know, like some people have dementia. The yeah. Buddhists have dementia yeah. at, the end, at, sure. at the time of death. Some, you know, some people cannot breathe. Some people cannot think. Some people may be even like sedated or unconscious or in a coma. Yeah. And so in that purpose, it's so important what she found by itself because if you just think that it's a co cognitive conscious choice, yeah. then okay, well, I will remember Krishna. Uh, we remember to remember Krishna at the time of death because that's what the Bhagavad Gita said, and that's easy to get there. Yeah. <clears throat> However, who knows? We have no guarantee of even being conscious or to think about having the capacity, physical capacity to to go there yeah. because pain may be there. Pain is often there at the time of death. Extreme pain is there at the time of death. But then because of the action of our, our, our life, and for me it was 35 years of whatever I did, I can see that that help yes. was just right there. Yeah. Yeah. Thanks for sharing that personal experience. And yeah, I'm simply, yeah, like each day, each moment, we do some cultivation of that Krishna consciousness, then it, it makes a profound difference. Um, whatever might be going on on a more external level. Yeah. Yeah, and at the time of death, who knows what's going to go yeah. happen? And yeah. probably what's happening is this. It, is going to be very overwhelming. Yeah. And like if you were conscious just to think about Krishna, may not be yeah. that available. Right. And so what I'm getting from your sharing is yeah, and whatever we do to cultivate a desire to serve, a desire to chant, without going to excuse it, well, my chanting's so bad, let me just give it up. Or, yeah, uh, reading Bhagavad Gita, whatever, one verse a day, whatever. Is, uh, Commitment to read all of Prabhupada's books, come to programs, kirtan. There's there's no waste there. There's Even no if I waste. just bring my body. Yeah. Thanks for that. Hare Krishna. Drew. Yesterday, bring Prima to a zoo. A zoo. <laughs> Honestly, when I was sharing that with people, I was feeling very like conflicted within myself because it just feels strange to uh, view uh, animals that seem to be like imprisoned in, in, in cages, yeah. In some way. And so there was like thoughts about that and, and thinking about like um, maybe purports or lectures that I've heard. Uh, and classes that I've heard talking about how like these the, this material life is a prison. Yeah. And uh it it was it was really like it was very um sobering yeah. to see like just just what their what their existence seems to 
uh, consist of. It's mm -hmm. really just, it's just like, I was like, wow, we don't see me waiting to end. That really is like all that's going on here. <laughs> and uh, I was having a text conversation. You, you got into the there. consciousness thing. Yeah, while, the animals, I was, while I was like uh, there, I was sharing with Kara, I was like, wow, my life does not feel very far from this. Oh, yeah. It's just like maybe a little more fancy, <laughs> a little more fancy, but it doesn't seem very far from this. And so I just connected with like that, uh, that not being how I would like to live my life. And I think a part of my discovery was how it can be challenging for me to uh, connect with and um, kind of reside uh, in my, um, in that identity, like just getting out of body and mind consciousness, because I think that so often I'm either living in my mind or living from that sent that like place of I'm this body. Yes. And so the the only thing that I'm finding to be helpful right now is uh chanting and in endeavoring to hear uh Prabhupada's chanting because mm. for whatever reason I find that when I'm listening to Prabhupada's chanting it just has like a uh, a different quality than when I'm hearing my own because it just feels like often I'm like connecting to my through my mind and when I listen to Prabhupada I feel like I just feel more inclined to listen with my heart okay. and listen yeah. from my, my mm -hmm. like the place of like my spirit soul yeah so that's that's just really what uh, I'm connecting with now which is mm -hmm is how like yeah, the more and more I can connect with myself at the, I, at the identity of my spirit soul, then hopefully that can be supported in the long run. Thanks for sharing, Drew. Very moving sharing. You, you saw yourself at the zoo. Yeah. yeah yes, in yesterday morning's class, I used that term from Prabhupada intellectual animalism, mm -hmm. or, I would say, or he would sometimes say, polished animal life, glorified forms of eating, sleeping, mating, and defending. Yeah, they're defending with their claws. They might defend with a thermonuclear device, but essentially it's the same. Or we might defend with very clever Freudian defense strategies that no one can pick up because I'm so subtle, but it's all about defending myself. Mm -hmm. And, or, yeah, and they, they might eat whatever they find on the ground and we might eat in a fancy restaurant, same stuff. Mm -hmm. And I hear that, you, you know, in your experience at the zoo with your daughter, you got, you got tired of it. He's like, yeah, I don't want to do this anymore. I, I really want, I really want to live for something some higher principle. Mm -hmm. That's beautiful, very moving. Yeah, it was a good experience. Mm -hmm. Thanks for sharing. Any other sharing, comments, questions? I'll share. Um, so what's happening for me is that I'm finding so much more shelter at Prabhupada's so to speak. Like I feel like um, coming to Christian consciousness, I didn't have a, a person I identified with to really give me instruction other than yourself and, and Melanie. Yes. But I felt like um, you were it. <laughs> and I feel like Yes, and there's Prabhupada, and there's so much mm -hmm. more with Prabhupada's books. Like I really did, I didn't really see the value because I got so much value in your your classes, mm. and so I feel like I feel like more energized to take 100% responsibility for my own um, readings of Prabhupada's books. Like mm -hmm. I feel like I always depended on someone else to be the person yeah. and to go to the program and. Not to be the one that's like a class or 
Um, yes. So I feel like more inspired to like maybe do more Prabhupada House that's just maybe a smaller group of just reading Prabhupada's books, mm. like just yep. really feeling like this is such a great way for someone to come to Christian consciousness, to understand the principles um, and something that is essential as this verse that yes. can meet people where they're at. Yes. And there's so much out there that, yeah. um, as you said, people don't believe in reincarnation or they do, and there's the science behind it. And so to actually have the science of self-realization with Prabhupada's purports, you know, and then do like Bhagavad Gita, it just feels more um, like empowering. Just like, yeah. instead of saying, I'm a victim, or I don't know what's going to happen to me. Yes. I feel more inspired yeah. to share, whereas before I would just want to be like coming to class. Yes. And so I feel like it's that, and it's also giving. So yeah. I want to, I want to give and receive. Yes. And I just, I'm, I'm, I, yeah, it's, it's just making me more aware of what's available at Prabhupada's house and what what we can do to offer more Prabhupada's books. Like a lot of people don't know. Prabhupada is, and mm. so it's nice to have that conversation and actually, you know, speak. I, I think when you make it more personalized, personalized, that, yeah. that's what makes it more attractive is to say, you know, Prabhupada was here not that long ago <laughs> and he made such an impression on the Western world, and this is his impact. And so, um, and then just to be his, his servant, like I feel like that's yes, my, my mission is to always, um be in service to, to Prabhupada. And uh, so I'm just inspired because I feel like this verse can really reach a lot of people that I know. Yeah. And mm -hmm. that it can be inspiring to like, have a conversation. Mm -hmm. And so not not to, um, yeah, I feel like I, I feel more empowered to share than I have ever before. Mm -hmm. So I'm just I'm, I'm happy for the, the experience today that I'm, I'm having. And um, and just and also to be more aware with my own family members, like to be to be more up, up front about what this means for our family life as well as what's here at yes. Prabhupada's house. Like I've separated Prabhupada's house as one family and my 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 blood family is yes. a different matter. And I feel like that's becoming more blurred and more more integrated, more integrated. Not, not not compartmentalized. Yeah. Yeah, I feel like that's, and that's what's so nice is that when I have the program on at my home with my parents listening in the background, you know, they're, they're maybe not understanding, but they're hearing the words. Hearing. <laughs> and so uh, I feel like, especially my mother, she really enjoys like, yes. listening. And then it's always nice to have a conversation afterwards. And I just, it's like with mommy sharing about dementia, I feel like the more and more that's maybe to bring her back to her state of consciousness, um, with her relationship with God, you know, whatever that may be for her is so uplifting for me that yeah. she's able to, to be present for that. And so, um, yeah, I'm just feeling really grateful for, for finding Zavato, for finding you and Mamani, for, for having this gift that um, I didn't have before. And, um, that's just gratitude. Thanks for sharing, and see, I'm, I'm moved by how you're emotionally moved and touched. Yeah, I'm very inspired by all parts of your sharing, including, including your. Yeah, I'm hearing you. Um, as a get to, not a have to. You're you're inspired to. To, to move to another gear, to be responsible for Prabhupada's movement. I'm really inspired to, to serve Cheryl Ashna this evening. Yes. And to explain like this verse. Like I want to yeah. I want to give her this verse tonight when I yes. when I drop off. The <laughs> Prashana and just like um you know get the juices flowing. Yeah, it's yeah. like a bridge. Yes. Yeah. Okay. So we can we can reveal. Yeah, like I'm, I'm gonna bring her like five of the gate up, right? Okay, okay, okay. <laughs> I'm gonna have this verse. Yeah. Say this we, we had class on today, and um, you know, and see see how it goes. Thanks for sharing. Yeah, so of course it's perfectly complete, and of course we can reveal we, we chose this verse for show. Yes, we did. <laughs> we had a Cheryl in mind. And then Cheryl's not here. <laughs> <laughs>
But yeah. she's going to get this first through you. Yes. And of course, and, you know, I'm, I'm completely enlivened. Uh, I'm so grateful we got to study and discuss this first. But you, I, I get that you're getting like, you know, this is this is practically applied wisdom. Yeah. And just like maybe years or decades before you came to Krishna consciousness, just like, well, this is a verse you could have related to back then and many of your friends and people like your current colleagues. Yeah. And just like, oh, and you're seeing how, what Prabhupada's giving, what Krishna's giving, conversation with these principles, it's like, wow, this really connects with people. And, and like you're, you're getting more excited and embracing more responsibility that like, yeah, you're going to share with, you're going to connect with people where they're at, give them, give them Bhagavad Gita, give them Yam Yam Bhagavad Swam Bhagavad And I, I get you're, you're coming even more alive in that. Yeah, kind of surprising. That's a nice surprise. Yeah, feel, yeah, complete. Thank you so much. It seems that you're, you're, Integrity. I'm asking your daily dasi integrity. That's who you are, your daily dasi. If you're going to be a Prabhupada, if you're holding the time, all that, if you're going to be a Prabhupada, if you're going to be a you'll see the integrity that Sri Prabhupada is still there. That's beautiful. I visited a, a few years ago, I visited a, a devotee who was in a nursing home. Yeah. And uh, <clears throat> He had very, very advanced stage of dementia. So I've been that he was in a wheelchair. It was like, um, like they were treating him like a vegetable, which I don't understand why anybody will even treat vegetables that way. But anyway, he was really dirty when I arrived to see him. They were just pushing food in his, they didn't care for him at all because he looked like a vegetable. And I spent, I don't know, 45 minutes, one hour with him before his family came and then I was different. But during that time with him, I was chanting the whole time. And he was, I could see the soul's response to the chanting. I could see that he had no way of communication or conscious communication. But his eyes and some things that, a few things that happened that the doctors and nurses would not even expect that could happen. Well, we really approve of that verse again. Of yeah. that, that he had cultivated, he was, he was there at the time of Shia Prabhupada, so he had cultivated that for 40 years of, 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 of chanting the name of the Lord, of, of, uh, of really following a, um, a God centered life. And even, even though he was in that state, of complete incapacity. Yes. He was fully, it was a part of him because of that training for so many years that was completely receptive, eager, and I don't know, almost sucking the spiritual dimension. Yeah. Like, like when I left, his family arrived and they were really, why are you here? Why are you here? And his brother, you know, like that. And when I left, he, oh, he did like that. Like almost he was reaching out of me to, with his eyes, which showed consciousness, really. <laughs> and um, so I, I really appreciate what you're doing for your mother, because whatever, she's, get, she's getting it. She's getting it in a very, very deep, deep level. Um, it's making such a difference for the journey of that soul. Such a big difference for the journals that so like you're doing the same thing at all. Yeah. yeah, I'm I'm feeling inspired to take the harmonium on with me today since we were talking earlier. I, I um wanted to leave it here probably less house, but I feel like I want to fill the house with music and you know, yeah. there with, with the harmonium. Yeah. Yeah. That that would be so soothing for the mother to really Yeah. 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 Hare Krishna. Any other comments or sharing? Bhagavad Gita Ki. Jai.
Shila Prabhu Pad Ki Jai. Namaste, Saraswati Devi, Gauravati Chakra. 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 Namaste, I was not going to go to Kirtan, but yeah. Okay. Yeah. All right. All right. So you can, uh, yeah. They can watch be part of the Kirtan. So All right. Gonna, yeah, we're going to go to Kirtan, and but I am going to stop the recording just so that we can um, do that part. And so, yes. Let me stop that part. Stop